this video, we're going to take a look at adding an animation or creating an animation and adding it to our project. You can see I've already added one to this temperature up button and we're going to do the same thing for the temperature down button. So over here, uh, I've got this control for the temperature button, which we see, um, which is the image on top. Um, but below that is uh, minus glow, which is going to be this blue um, glow, which currently we don't see. And be that's because when we imported this from Photoshop, the transparency in Photoshop was turned down to zero. But if we change the alpha up to 255, you can see it. So uh, what I'm going to do um, to create this animation is I'd like to start off with this um, image scaling so that it's hiding behind the, the minus button here. Um, so for the position here in, in the properties for this particular image render extension, I'm going to uncheck match control width um, and I'm going to scale it in size. And I'm going to divide this by two so that's half the width and then half the height. Um, and, and this way it's going to be able to fit behind the button. Now you can see it's hanging out at the top left corner of the control and that's because of the alignment for this image. So I can change this to be in the center middle and now I've got this uh, blue glow hiding behind the minus button. And so now I'm ready to create my animation where it's going to pop out from behind and we'll take a look at what that looks like right now. So up here in the control, um, like top toolbar menu, I've got this green button to toggle a uh, recording animation. You can see this red key line that is outlining everything. It's just to let me know that now I'm recording an animation. So the changes that I make in the UI are going to be recorded as animation steps. So if I change the width from 90 to 120, I mean 180, uh, you can see that it'll grow in the width and the height. And at the same time, I wanted it to fade out to zero. Um, and that creates that glow. Now, um, another part of the animation that I want is for it to end up back where it started out from, because you might run this animation a few times in a row. Um, so here you can see that icon for um, an animation snapshot. And then in the menu as well, there's take a snapshot. And what this means is that it's going to take the next uh, sequence of steps in your animation um, where I can put everything back to where it was. So I want it to be visible again. So I can change the alpha back to 255. And then I'm going to change the size to be um, 90 pixels um, wide and hide. And when I'm done, you know, I hit stop and I can call this um, temp underscore down. And I hit OK. And this has been added. Uh, down here to my animation timeline. You know, this is the temp up that we already had in the project, and now we've got temp down. So these are those steps that we've recorded. So here you can move your steps around, and you can see in the properties view as well that um, you know there's all of the little attributes with each animation step. Um, so you can see these are working at a linear rate. If I um, change these to ease out, you know they can change their curve on how, how they behave uh, when they're animating. For this alpha, I'd like to uh, shorten how long that step takes. So I'd like to use 350 milliseconds and start it a little bit later. Um, so it's finishing at the same time. And then um, in here, in the animation timeline view, you know, there's some different icons. You can zoom in, zoom out, and so on. Um, and I can, uh, this is preview the animation so you can see um, what your animation looks like. So that second half of the animation when we're putting everything back, um, I don't want that to be visible. And so to change that, what I can do is I can change these steps you know, to be zero milliseconds. So I can click and drag them, or I can go to the properties view and just say zero milliseconds. And now they're like that. Um, so all I have to do now at this point is to add an action that runs this animation. So I'll say on press, you know, in here, uh, in my actions, I can select animation. And then there's a list of different animations that we've got. So this is the temp down animation. I hit finish. Now it's part of the temperature down control. And save my project, hit simulate, and now I can run that animation. So it's turning the temperature down and then turning the temperature up. So it's nice to add more personality and functionality into the tool with animations.